Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Archeo Gaming live session. Um, as always, my name is Sinara Saleh. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in the US, and I will be hosting this live event. Today we are going to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so we will dive in ancient Greece. And I have brought two scholars with me who will walk you around through the game and answer all the questions you might have. And first of all, some practicality, practicalities. Um, as always, this uh, event is organized through SASA which stands for Safe Ancient Studies Alliance. So we are a non-profit organization and our mission oh, is to reverse the current the downward trend in the study Christian. of the ancient world by engaging the public and bringing together students and scholars to share their passion for the study of the ancient world. So if you're interested in SASA, you can find us on the internet. We have a website, safeancientstudies.org. We are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, we are on Twitter, we are on YouTube. Um, so you can find us everywhere. And please do follow us if you are interested in our cause. As for today, some protocol. Um, please feel free to send all your questions in the chat, but be kind and respectful. Um, as you might hear, the quality of our audio is always the greatest. <laughs> So please be patient if we are trying to uh, work through this. Uh, the problem is that Twitch does not allow us to have multiple uh, microphones on at the same time. Uh, people who are in different places, so we always struggle to try to find a way where Okay, try that again. Can we hear anything? Now we can. Okay, I don't know what happened there. It just did a thing. But we'll okay. Do some reloading. Can you hear me now? Alexios Let's see if this works sound. again. <laughs> Alexios broke the sound. Well, I wouldn't. That wouldn't surprise me. Can you hear me now? Okay, okay. great. <laughs> um, so at this point, I want to introduce our two guests for today. So our first guest is Lexi, um, and she earned her bachelor's in classical studies from the University of Missouri. And her scholarly interests are exploring classical reception to the lens of contemporary storytelling in the media. So this is very fitting for that. Um, last year, she started the Ozymandias Project, which is an ancient world podcast, which you can find, I'm sure, on the internet and all the available uh, podcast channels. Um, she plans to pursue a master's next year in Southeast European Studies at the University of Athens. So she will actually be moving to Greece um, over the summer. Our second guest is Kira Jones, who has a Bachelor in Classics and Latin from wow. the University of Georgia. And she completed her master's and a PhD in Art History at Emory University. And she currently researches Minerva as a Roman goddess, apart from Athens, um, I believe. And she's also very interested in archaeo gaming and classical reception in pop culture. So welcome, Lexi and Kira. And I will leave it up to you to guide us around. And thank you for being here. Great. Thanks, Tina.
Okay, so maybe for people who don't know what this game is, maybe some background information? Uh, sure, uh, I can start, I guess. Uh, so this game is set during the 5th century BCE, um, during the Peloponnesian War, which I believe are years five... Oh gosh, this is testing me. Uh, crap, I can't actually remember. <laughs> I'm so bad with dates, I am so sorry. Um, but either way, it's during the Peloponnesian War. Um, and I guess without spoiling the game for people who have not played it... Um, it's basically, ooh, I've not had to recap this game for people who have not played this before. Um, I would say it's, uh, it's, the, the central story is about a, a mercenary, a Greek mercenary, who essentially has to go run around Greece and, um, uh, eliminate an ancient cult. Uh, that is sort of politically um, trying to control Greece and um, find her family um, is kind of how I would put it. Uh, Kira? So let's get them um, going. I believe you start in Athens here. Okay. Uh, hang on. Uh, Kira, your audio is cutting out here, so I cannot hear you very well. Your audio is very low. Can you pop that up for me? Actually, I don't know. Uh, I can only hear you coming through my phone. I can't hear you coming through. Can people hear Kira? We seem I to be having <laughs> some technical difficulties. Uh, Kira okay. is talking and nobody is hearing her. Yeah, okay, they're saying they can't hear her. Um, Kira, is your... Are you muted on Discord? Because that may be the issue. Because I can't hear you coming through Discord. You're coming through my phone. You should. Yeah, we need you to... Uh, yeah, we, we need you to use... Okay. That. Yeah, there we go. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. So, cool. everything right. you just added, do you mind saying again? Because did not hear you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Great. All right, so, um, uh, are you getting the echo, or is that just on my That's end? just your phone. So keep on talking, okay. Kira. We yeah, can hear we you. Can hear you. Um, <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, so basically, um, to add on to the synopsis, uh, you run around 5th century Greece, but there's this cool mechanic where um, you get to influence each side of the Peloponnesian War. So um, you're not just um, running around trying to... Uh, um, disrupt this cult, but you also get to help out Athens sometimes, and you um, get to help out Sparta. So you really get to uh, take a tour of most of uh, mainland Greece and some of the islands. Sweet. Uh, so I decided we should just start off here in the most iconic of places, some place that everyone will hopefully recognize, uh, which is we are standing right on the Acropolis in Athens, because it's a really uh, beautiful recreation. Um, okay, there we go. So I'm going to just sort of pan around. Or actually, you know what? I can go in eagle mode just to give us an overview of where we're standing. Oh, that looks good. Okay. So here we are running around, or 
flying around the Acropolis. So the overview essentially is uh, there, this is the Parthenon and then some of the other buildings on here. Where is it? Right here. This is the Erechtheion. And then we have a couple of the other buildings, which, Kira, you can jump in if I'm wrong, but I don't think most of these buildings existed in real life uh, up top here. Um, there, there were only a couple um, buildings, right? Yeah, I think what they've done here is they've added in some of the archaic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we know that they've got the Erechtheon there. Um, they've got uh, the Parthenon, obviously, the um, big Athena Promako statue. Um, and we've got some gardens. Uh, it's been a long time since, time since I actually looked at the... Um, the site map of the Acropolis. Um, but they've got a, a lot of uh, votive temples up here too. So yeah, there's definitely some uh, creative license, but I mean, it's it's on par with what you would expect at hello, a sanctuary Sansa, like this. Hello, Chad. Hey guys. Yeah, for sure. That's what I kind of thought. They, ha they, they got the main buildings, which is like the important part. <laughs> People in the U.S., you can uh, go see yeah, a recreation the recreation of the Parthenon in Nashville. Um, the architecture of the Erechtheon is so hard to actually get. It's such a weird building. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about it, why don't we head over there? Because that seems like a fun stop. Um, not only for its history, but just like the architectural stuff is really cool, too. But yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so here we're going, and then this is a pretty good view of it, I think. Here we go. True, I've been there. Great. Uh, okay, so you want to start us off with something about this? Go ahead, or I can. Either one. Hello, I'd for fix. Thanks for joining us. The interesting thing about uh, so playing this game is that you really see how colorful everything was like when you go and visit these sites all you see is rubble and it's gray and you know red sand and dirt mm. but in this game you really see just how beautifully painted things were and and the bronze and the gold is so shiny and the flowers that are being added i think that is what most impresses me playing this game for sure and i mean yeah. They got a lot of details right about it. I mean, it's definitely... Actually, they toned down the colors because uh, in real life, oh, it would have wow. been a lot, a lot brighter than this. Um, in a, in a conversation a with, uh, a with a game Too developer, they basically this. just said that if they made it as bright as it was in real life, uh, so glad you it would have it, it caused the lighting department too many issues because then you would have too many like glary, weird things. So it's really funny that it's still bright. They still maintain the color, but it's still course, not as bright let us know uh, if as, you have as any it should have been. Um, yeah, that's it's pretty funny. Uh, but if we head yeah, in, yeah, and um, go ahead. One thing I do want to note is that not all of the frescoes that you see are accurate. Uh, what they do for this game is they reproduce really a small number the text to of um, art pieces from vases. Uh, the fresco that we see here is from a vase, I believe. Um, and they just um, kind of rubber stamp them text everywhere to, to um, provide this kind of ancient ambiance. So, yes, there would have been frescoes like this, but not this specific imagery. Please tell us how to turn it off. Definitely. Wait, are we having text-to-speech issues? Can, can I can't hear over Twitch, but if we are, I can try to turn when it off as well. someone types here in chat, a robot says the comment. When yes. someone types something in the chat, a robot reads out the comments? Yeah. yeah. The first time we've ever had that. that <laughs> okay. No, because I, I have it oh. set on mine usually, because when I'm here, I can try to turn it off, though. Give me a, give yes, me a second. The, the game menu might do a weird thing, but... Um, let me go into my settings. This must be a Twitch setting. Um, I don't know if it's a Twitch setting so much as it's an audio thing where, um, like, uh, let's see. Um, let me see. 
Okay, there we go. Advanced settings, comments. Oh. I'm not seeing any of that on Twitch. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm about to literally turn uh, turn off enable comments, which I've just done now. So hopefully, please, somebody tell us. Um, tell me the robot voice is off because I've turned it off. Testing, testing, one, two, three. It's off? Someone says it's off. Okay. Hooray. Right. <laughs> we live, we learn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, LOL. It's always an adventure. I'm just trying to stream. Okay, so I'm going to head right into the temple for a second because we're going to see there's more of this sort of plugged in vase painting on the walls. Um, mm. But I believe, and then Kira, you can chime in. This is where the festival, the Great Panathenaea, would end. And this statue actually was not marble or ivory and gold, it was wooden because I believe that. Uh, the festival, you could dress this one up in peplos, like clothes, essentially. Yeah, so this was the uh, the zoanon for Athena, um, uh, Polias, and yeah, the um, the festival of the Panathenaea pretty much revolved around this. So, um, a certain number of uh, specially chosen girls would weave a peplos for uh, the zoanon each year, and then uh, present it to her after ritually bathing it. And um, just uh, for those who may not be familiar, uh, a zoanon is it, it's a special kind of uh, Greek cult statue, which is um, somewhat miraculous. So we're looking at like pieces of meteorite or um, like weird wood that washes up, something that you could feasibly say was sent by the gods. So it doesn't always um, look like a really finished uh, statue, but it is considered to be a little bit more sacred. And uh, we do hear stories of them actually doing weird stuff. So uh, the statue of Athena in Troy was also a zoanon. And uh, when that was taken to Rome, um, we get um, anecdotes about how, you know, one guy who wasn't purified looked at it and it made him blind. Um, but, you know, he was a good Roman, so he saved it anyways um, to save the Republic. Um, you know, because it's just a good Roman thing to do. But um, there's another story about it basically turning away an entire horde of Gauls uh, from sacking the city. So, yeah, these statues get up to a lot of stuff. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I figure, I mean, this is a beautiful, um, like, recreation basically for the game. I think it's just kind of like a smart creative choice to just, like, put yet another golden statue in here. Um, yeah, definitely not totally accurate, but still pretty. Yeah, Chris Elephantine is so cool to see, especially with all the torch lighting effects and um, the buildings. You can really get a sense of the monumentality. Yeah, for sure. And then one thing that I noticed was they kind of put the freeze for the Parthenon itself, like, they made it bigger and put it on the outside where it wouldn't have been. Um, and I think it's, like, the same repeating image. I don't think they actually did a lot more. Um, no, I think they've got the freeze up there. The iron freeze. Oh. You have to climb up to see it, though. Okay. I was going to say, because usually I kind of bypass it and I go right in, but... Yeah, but you're right, Lexi. I did hear that they only yeah, made a certain amount there. of freezes, and then they kind of recycled them on other temples that you encounter through the game. They didn't make 500 different freezes for each temple, uh, but they still made a couple of them. Yeah. Well, here we go. Yeah, and I, I do want to note that it's not laziness that they didn't make different freezes for every building, but this stuff takes a lot of manpower and money and time to do so they did a certain number of them to give the sense of historical accuracy and then you know eventually they have to put the game out so people can play it 
right? I think yeah. we've been working on this for 10 years for no reason. Yeah. 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 But, Academics would work on it for 10 years, not actual game studios. Yeah. Mm, but right. it is kind of nice that they did include it here because this was definitely kind of uh -huh. a shock. Also, just because of the way that, like, when the Greeks painted and put it up on there, like, they clearly knew this was not some place where you were going to be able to easily see it. Like, you had to know where to look, right? Actually, um, there was a study done on this, and um, I know because I was um, kind of half part of it, but um, Emery and Vanderbilt got together to make a scale reproduction of the Ionic Freeze and put it up on the Parthenon in Nashville. And you could um, you could see it pretty well from a decent distance away. Oh, oh I had no idea. Me neither. Yeah, it's the um, if you look up the Parthenon project in Emory, mm -hmm. um, we've got like a whole video out there on it or something. Sweet. All right, here I'm gonna just kind of get us down. <laughs> Arms must kind of hurt. Ow. Okay. See. Uh, Okay, maybe it wasn't the smartest to drop down into the brazier of fire, but, you know, <laughs> you know it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so, all right, heading into the beautifully recreated interior of the Parthenon. I did kind of want to come in here because it's, like, my favorite room ever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this statue of uh, Athena Parthenos. It's like the most famous statue in Greek history, and I'm really, really happy that they included it uh, in the game. She looks great. Um, like, yeah, I don't know. It's fantastic. <laughs> Let's see if we can get closer, actually. Yeah, I mean, the striations on the ivory and everything is just spectacular. I, I like, don't want to climb on her, because then you can't, like, see her, but, um, you know, it's always a temptation. Uh, so I think, though, fun fact about her is, like, when, when Athens was, like, losing the war, losing money, and they were getting poor, because she was made out of ivory and gold, uh, when they wanted money, I think they could literally take metal sheets off the statue and make money out of it, um, so, like, I just find it kind of hilarious that, like, you could literally take a layer of her drapery off when you're poor. <laughs> yeah, and they had to keep repairing it because um, the inner frame was made out of wood, and they had a big problem with rats. <laughs> so they would... Didn't they not only, like, go up and nibble the wood, didn't they actually live in there? I think so, yeah. Uh, the shocking secrets of ancient Greece. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> you would think that the gods would protect their own statues a bit better against rodents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but otherwise, I think they did a really great job of recreating the interior, although I'm pretty sure they didn't have these shields on the wall. I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure on that. Okay. I also heard something about the water in that place having a practical function. Yeah, yeah. Um, we think uh, it essentially was placed in there to control the humidity of the room. So it's basically an ancient humidifier, uh, because also, like, the wood in the statue, it would, like, because of the climate, it would have gotten probably too dry without some kind of humidity. Um you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, especially the, um, the ivory. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a really cool uh, addition. I was really, like, fairly shocked when they put it in. Um, but if I'm not wrong, I don't think that every single, like, temple had uh, a little pool of water in it. Like, I don't think that the Temple of Olympia at Zeus had one in there. No. Not that I know of. Um, it definitely wasn't usual. Yeah, so kind of special, pretty sweet. Um, I'm gonna kind of exit. Pretty smart. <laughs> it it was really smart. They didn't know. They did just such a great job. I I think I remember something about like when recreating the front of the temple as well. So those like rows of bronze shields, uh, they wouldn't have been on there here in the fifth century. I believe Alexander the Great started sending shields. 
have conquered peoples back to Athens, and then they put shields up on the Parthenon. Um, Kira, do you remember anything about that? I don't. Uh, I know that the Menopes are from the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. Yeah, those are definitely not correct. Um, and then kind of the, the pediment area as well, those are, they look beautiful in the game, um, but those are definitely not bronze, uh, and I think that's also from a different temple, because that is not what's usually on there. Yeah, I think, is that also from Zeus at Olympias? Um, I can try to either climb up there, or we can try to use the eagle. I don't know what one would look better in terms of, like, getting an actually good look at it. Um, I can try to climb on it. If we think that'll help us. Uh, Lexi, is your um, helmet part of your hood? Yeah, so actually, uh, here, you can see. I can change it if it's distracting, because the hood is very distracting. Um, but, yeah, it's like this hooded... Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a hooded thing. But if you would rather just see an actual helmet, I can... Uh, well, the one without the hood is that. Um... That's what it looks like without the hood. Face mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I mean, if it's distracting, I can change it, but, you know, I don't really think it makes a difference. I don't think so. It was just a question of the chat. Oh, cool. Sweet. Um, yeah, here, you know what? I can try to climb on this nice pediment to see... To get a closer look, yeah, I don't remember what temple it's actually from, but I know it's not the correct one. Can you can you see from here? Can you tell what this is? Okay, not Olympia. Um... Yeah, I really can't. In any case, oh, it's a dark right? <laughs> yeah. Either way, it's not the right one, and it's definitely not in bronze. Um, those, those are actually what the Elgin marbles are. So when we talk about fighting about actual marble statues, that's where it would have been. So that's what's in the British Museum. Highly recommended. Go see them. But you know. Uh, but yeah, so we can go. Do 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 do. Uh, Kira, do you fancy going to Piraeus, maybe? We can talk about some of the naval elements? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. There's probably going to be a faster way than me running, but... <laughs> I could fast travel, but that takes forever. <laughs> Actually, let's see how far. Where am I going? Where am I going? <laughs> it's a little hard to orient myself directionally. Ooh. Actually, you know what? I will fast travel there. That would take me quite a while. Um, but yeah, so while we're fast traveling there, if anyone has any questions, please submit them in the chat. We want to answer lots of great questions. Uh, well, uh, Lexi, you just got admonished for using the term Elgin marbles and not Parthenon marbles, so... Oh, <laughs> yikes. Okay, excuse Shame. me. Excuse me. Okay, well, you know, sometimes you never know. Some people know them by one name, not another. <laughs> Gotta go with some, you know, most recognizable, I suppose. <laughs> Sorry, Parthenon Marvels. <laughs> Alright, so we're almost loaded up, and then hopefully we'll, ta-da, be at Piraeus. All right, here we go. We should be loaded. All right. I'll jump down. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm pretty fond of Delphi myself. Yes, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Just the entire yeah. recreation of the temple. Like, it's a gorgeous, loca gorgeous location. Okay, 
So I'm going to call my ship just so we can kind of see. So how do we all feel about the game versions of historical people like Herodotus or Socrates? Hmm. Or uh, Alcibiades, my personal favorite. <laughs> It's terrible, it's terrible. Um, cool. Okay, I'm gonna back up a little. I mean, I think that Socrates was pretty accurate because, yeah, just like you said, um, those are, I wanted to punch him the entire game, uh, which is how I feel when I'm reading him. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I consider that very accurate. Although, the, the writing for him was excellent, because honestly, half the time I'm like, I would never be able to just pop out that sort of uh, circular arguing that he, he's able to, to pull out and, and sort of make you, or make... Oh, the writing was genius level. Yeah, yeah. Just to be able to have either Cassandra or Alexios kind of, after every interaction, be like, what on earth did I just hear? What's going on? My claim to fame is that right when I started playing, I was bitching about Socrates on Twitter, and the writer who did all of his lines actually saw my tweet and liked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, all right, so I've called our ship the Adressia here. Um, I'm not an expert in naval warfare, so there's not much I can say about it except for the fact that while it looks gorgeous uh, in the game, um, and you do need like something that's passable for naval warfare, um, here, I'm gonna actually kind of take our ship out so people can get a sense of what's going on if I'm sort of on the ship. So, uh, yeah, I've been asked a lot, like, would your crew essentially have been standing on the top of your trireme as it's rolling about, uh, kind of ready to um, attack people, should they attack you? Uh, the answer is no. Um, Kira, I don't know how much you know about triremes, but uh, from my understanding, uh, the ship, like, the having everyone standing on the top would have made the ship too heavy and would have made the entire ship capsize. Uh, yeah, I don't really know that much about triremes, but um, that's what I've heard as well. So... I mean, obviously, add-ons like the flamethrower aren't accurate. Yeah. Uh, do you know if, like, they would have had big sort of, um, uh, figureheads at the, at the front of their ships, kind of above where your ram would be? Um, they had figureheads, but not that big, I don't think. Yeah, they made these really big. Yeah, it seems to me like if you were ramming something, that figurehead would get stuck in the other ship. Which would probably be very unhelpful if you're trying to quickly ram somebody and then move away. The bad that you can't go inside these ships and see their storage spaces and stuff. Yeah, that's... Uh... Definitely unhelpful because I would have liked to be able to go below deck. Um, mm -hmm. Like the fact that you have to just kind of stand there on the deck. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, it's a little sad. <laughs> um, okay, where can I sail where someone won't attack me while I'm trying to just <laughs> show the naval elements? Uh, here, we'll go back this way. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Some of them are from the Homeric Hymns, and um, they got a Greek musician to do original scores for it. Oh, for the sea shanties? Yeah. Yeah, they're so cool, aren't they? That's uh, one of the best game soundtrack moments, I think. And, it's, and they're so catchy. They're so catchy. It's so accurate, like, for sure. I do wonder how much of the ship mechanics they took from Black Flag, though. Yeah, yeah, that's something I'm really... I wonder. I mean, obviously it's like completely different, because cannons and javelins, but yeah, same mechanic. Uh, you were just talking about Delphi. Do you want to head over to Delphi? Because I think it's a gorgeous location. Uh, yeah, sure. 
Uh, one thing I do want to know yeah. is, um, can you look towards the Parthenon? Yes, where is it? Actually, I might have to go up this way. Uh, where are you? There it is. There it is. Very far. Right, so you can actually see the, um, the gigantic Athena statue, which is very accurate. Um, you would have been able to see it, um, as soon as you rounded the Cape of Sunion. Yeah, she's like 40 feet tall, right? So like, and then she's made out of pure bronze, so she would have been glinting in the sunlight, right? So she's like a big uh, yeah. homing beacon or flashlight or something? Yeah, now, um, she didn't look like that. Uh, we know from some uh, late Roman period coins that uh, instead of holding that spear, she would have been holding out now. Mm -hmm. um, but um, again, they they took the uh, the model from the Athena Parthenos and just kind of plucked it outside. Yeah, uh, the size is accurate for sure. Yeah, and it's really cool because I know when you're actually standing on top of her in the game, you can look out and you can see Piraeus as well um, uh -huh. and a bunch of the ships. So. Totally, yeah. No, it's it's fantastic. Um, cool. All right. It shows you the geography of Greece, how everything is so mo mountainous. You don't always think about the landscape in a sort of um, vertical kind of way, how there are points in the landscape, that mountains that you can see, and temples on top of mountains. Um, I feel this game really portrays this kind of landscape very interestingly at least that made me uh -huh. think about um how the landscape influences the placement of cities and settlements and temples and strategic locations oh for sure oh for sure no they did a wonderful job recreating the topography of greece um like i didn't have any doubt that they would but like this game came out after they did origins and so having portray like a, just a gorgeous color palette and a gorgeous topography of ancient Egypt. I was really curious to see what they were going to do with this one because I think um, when we talk about ancient Greece, um, I, I think what's lost is like this is a very dry mountainous country where like growing natural resources was really hard. I mean this is an ancient civilization that relied on rain as well um you know so it's, it's vastly different from egypt where you, all you had to do is essentially wait for the for the nile to flood and then boom it's fertile and beautiful and whatever and then um you have everything you need greece was definitely not like that you had to wait for it to rain or else you were kind of hosed um so you know <laughs> yeah very different Yeah, i'm not sure on how accurate the distribution of orders in the cities are is uh, i mean there definitely would have been distribution but i don't know if they based it on actual archaeological uh, evidence all right i'm just running around to the front of the temple of apollo i'm going to settle up right uh, next to the altar here and then turn so we can kind of look at it right so very important point that they got about the altar is that it was outside Yes. So, I mean, normally um, coming from like a, um, a modern religion perspective, you would expect something important like the altar to be inside the religious building. But um, the temples were really just like elaborate houses for the cult statue and um, the dedications. Uh, the actual um, burning and sacrifices and um, public elements would have taken place at the altar outside. For sure. And that's kind of what makes the Parthenon different, right? The fact that it didn't, it wasn't just one big place with one statue. Like it, it's, it had, uh, you know, the two distinct entrances and areas. Um, I'm pretty sure not all temples had a, a back room for a treasury in there. Yeah. Definitely not the older ones. Yeah. So they did. They really, they, they got the altar really wonderfully. Let's see, okay. Let's see if I can walk a little closer to the actual temple. I don't think we can go in, unfortunately. 
think I think we're kind of locked outside. <laughs> yeah, I think you can only go in during the story. Darn. But um, it, it's not especially accurate. Yeah. So I'm not as familiar with what should be on the pediment and the metopes, but I can tell. I think this is an, again just like plugged in. Yeah, it is not this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, we've got the metopes from Zeus at Olympia again. Yeah, and then uh, and then um, I, I mean, we've got pedimental statues up there, but uh, they're definitely not from Delphi. Yeah, I was gonna say, are these lions? They almost look Persian to me, but I can't actually tell. I can't tell. But. And then they've got so beautiful though. It feels like you it feels like you're there yourself on like a warm summer evening. Yeah, and then they have the mm -hmm. the theater right up here, right? If I can run to it. And scale a wall. <laughs> yeah, so um the thing about Delphi is that it is basically up. You know, somehow no matter what direction you're going in, you're still going up. Yeah. And the, the theater is right at the top of that. So I think, was the, was the theater actually round like this? Because I'm pretty sure this was more of a Roman thing, to have it completely round. I feel like it's supposed to be, oh, what's it called? Uh... I don't want to say hexagonal, that's totally wrong, but uh, it definitely was not round like this at this time period. I just wondered, because you had to buy tickets to get into the theater, right? To go see a, a player performance. But this space is so open. How would they guard this to make sure everyone bought a ticket? Ooh, um, <laughs> that is actually not my, uh, <laughs> that's not my area, so I have no idea, so Kira might. Presumably, you would have to approach it from the bottom, um, so you would, like, start at the bottom of the hill, and then wind your way up through all of the votive temples and statues, uh, get to the big temple of Apollo, and then, uh, follow the path up to the theater. So they, they must have had some sort of, like, gate or, um, like, ticket booth there or something. Here you can go in from the back. It's completely open. There's no fencing around it. Or maybe they would have had guards standing there making sure you're not sneaking in. <laughs> I mean, you also would have had to, like, go over the entire mountain to come in from the back. So I feel like that's kind of a deterrent. Mm. Yeah, so maybe unless you're coming, like, over the top. But, I mean, they even recreated it. It's pretty steep. Like, this is pretty scalable in-game because you are superhuman and just can climb up that. Uh, if you know any, like, real-life humans who would easily be able to just, like, walk up that, all those rocks, <laughs> let me know because I want to meet them. But, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So can we go down and check out some of the votive temples? Yeah. So we're just gonna kind of run around here. If I can remember where they placed them. Wait, over here. Yes. Yeah. The Sibley Stone there. Is that how you pronounce it? Sibley <laughs> Sibyl. <laughs> As you can hear, I am not an ancient Greek person, uh, expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we are. Oh, you know, they, they captured the pottery so well. I mean, I love the, I love the little pottery that they included in the game. Um, uh -huh. Because you can have... I don't know, I, I see there's a lot of traditional, like black figure and red figure vases, although they don't seem to be... I don't know, they seem to be kind of thrown in together wherever, but um, it's still a cool inclusion. 
Then you have yeah, and the, the size of the votive temples is um, pretty accurate as well. So the way that this worked is that Delphi was a Panhellenic sanctuary, uh, which meant that technically it wasn't under the control of any of the polices, um, but everyone could um, essentially build their own small votive temple um, so that they could store their own offerings in there. Uh, but what it ended up being was this really big competition um, between the city-states as to who could um, build a bigger and better temple. Of course. Um, so if you go down to the, um, the very bottom, like the entrance of Delphi, oh, yeah. uh, there's a big monument from the Spartans there. And uh, essentially what they did was after they defeated Athens, um, they erected this gigantic monument of 12 Spartan generals uh, right in front of the Athenian treasury. <laughs> um, so it's the first thing you see when you walk into Delphi. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's basically this constant reminder from Sparta to Athens that, yeah, we kicked your ass and um, we're going to spend money on it to make sure everyone knows. Yes, they did have tripods on top of columns. They stuck so much shit on top of columns. <laughs> They're always right. So we've got the um, the Spartans on the left here. The question: um, How come some of the statues are naked and other ones are clothed? <sighs> uh, I think it just depends on which statue they're modeling it after. So again, they took basic types. Um, I think some of these might have been taken from frescoes and then you get some famous ones like the Drifters or um, uh, Demosthenes uh, shows up uh, quite often. Um, so some of them um, were clothes, some of them had like a short cloak on, um, but I, I don't think there's any real reason to it beyond that. Is it the same as in ancient Roman culture where clothing is also symbolic? You would put them in a military dress or a political robe uh, to make your point across that that is what you want this person to be remembered for? Yeah, yeah, um, roughly speaking. Uh, so historically, yes, but not necessarily in the game. And uh, my bad, these are the um, the Spartans. Yeah, I was going to say, no, these are clearly the Spartans. I always forget because yeah. I always think they put them right at the beginning. No, they're here. <laughs> In all their warlike glory. <laughs> yeah. And then if we go a little further back, um, they included the Sifnian treasury. Back this way? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, or other way, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait, I was like, which way? <laughs> Yeah, there's so many of these. There we go. Uh, just keep following the path back. I think if we turn left here. Right here? Yeah, it's right around in here somewhere. Yeah, I was like, wait, is this the... Uh... Oh. Make it. Dedication of the king. I was gonna say this is looking a lot like. Oh, oh, what is the statue I learned about in my art history class? Uh, the Getty Kuros. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. I was like, oh, they have, like, a crap ton of the same one. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait, is this one you yeah, can so... go in? Yeah, you can go in that one. Oh yes. Okay. Here, now we can go into one of these actual dedications. Huh. Yeah, they kind of do. Um, the point of them wasn't really to be um, individuals. Yeah. Would you, would you depict political leaders completely naked? No. 
Um, you could if they wanted to be heroic. Yeah. There's a couple different ones, just... So I guess that's the only one you can actually go into. That's kind of sad. Okay. Just so what are those, so, yeah. um, um, snake columns? These? Mm-hmm. Um, again, architecture not my strongest suit, but, um, snakes were pretty, you, they were used for a lot of different things. Like, the imagery of snakes was pretty strong, and then it was also... One of the sacred animal was it? I think it was a sacred animal for what Apollo? I think. Yeah, I mean, um, Apollo founded Delphi by killing the gigantic python. Yeah. So, um, snake imagery kind of goes hand in hand with that. Yeah, definitely interesting um, architectural choice here. <laughs> Wouldn't be my favorite, but you know, that's cool. So the Sydney Treasury um, in Delphi, it's an archaic period building, but it was the first one to be made entirely out of marble. Yeah, I was like, I don't know where it is in the game, actually. I don't I can't find it in the game, but I thought it was over here. I think that, yeah, I think that might have been it behind us, because it had the, um, the two, like, um, the two figure of columns in the front. Over here. I'm going to look up a map. Yeah, I was like, I can't. I was like, it's either back here, or it's either on the other side, but I literally have no idea. <laughs> um, in answer to your question, uh, modern Greek and ancient Greek are extremely different. Um, I believe in Greece, sometimes they teach uh, they sometimes they teach a little bit of ancient Greek. I'm not sure what kind of requirement it is. I'd have to ask a Greek friend of mine. Um, but essentially, no. If you are a modern Greek learning just modern Greek, uh, you would pretty much do the same thing that um, uh, all of us foreigners do, which is go up to a, pe uh, to, a to a slab of ancient Greek and say, I don't know what that means. Because uh, the I believe the grammar structure is completely different. I mean, the only advantage is you can read the letters because you're already familiar with the alphabet, um, but you would really have no idea. So, uh, yeah, you could probably sight-read just by pronouncing all the letters, but you would literally not know what you're saying. And I when I was from um, classical we Greek in college, there was a Greek international student in my class who thought he would probably take this class for um, easy credit. But he gave up after a couple of weeks. <laughs> it was too hard. Ancient Greek is hard. Um, you know, for, I guess, just uh, just a little um, nugget for, for all the linguists out there who may be watching. Yeah, I mean, I would say just in terms of, like, your very basic, easy differentiator is in the pronunciation of some letters. So ancient Greek, you would, you would see a... Uh, beta and a delta, and they would be pronounced b and d. Uh, that is not the case in modern Greek. Um, y the beta essentially becomes a v, a v sound, and the, the delta becomes a th sound. So instead of like dios for god, you'd get theos, which is actually the word for uncle in uh, modern Greek, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the accents are a bit different, but that's marginally only because of the different pronunciation of the letter itself. That's pretty much it. Um, and then, this is probably getting a bit too deep in the weeds, but if you know anything about Greek, uh, ancient Greek uh, has five different cases, modern Greek has four, and you only use three. So, uh, modern Greek is actually a lot easier to learn than ancient Greek, so if you are someone who wants to learn how to speak any kind of Greek, um, I would highly recommend starting with modern Greek uh, and then progressing to ancient because I find that uh, it's a little easier. Um, I started with ancient, found it really hard, uh, switched to modern, find it a lot easier. It's still hard, but uh, it's a lot easier. <laughs> 
the case with any language, right? As it evolves, it becomes easier. Yes. Although Greek is still different than, you know, learning something like Latin. Um, Latin, it, it starts out easier and then gets harder as you progress. Um, I don't know. I, 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 had a, I had a professor who, who was very fond of saying, you'll wrestle with Latin, but Greek makes you sweat. All the languages I've learned ever, Greek was the hardest, <laughs> personally. Yeah, yeah. All the NPCs in the game, unfortunately, are speaking modern Greek with very modern accents. Uh, but I understand it. I mean, you know, since you have to make this game for non-classicists, you have to do things like um, they had to make a lot of the pronunciations under easily understandable. Um, so, but it's an interesting clash. So, so some of these NPCs, if they're going around, if if they're like worshiping at temples, and you happen to pass them, and then you hear some of uh, the NPC dialogue, it's really funny. Um, so you'll hear them pronounce one word with a really modern pronunciation, and then the very next thing you'll hear is like them saying Zeus, just straight up Zeus. Um, that's that's not how you say it uh, in in modern Greek. So. It's it's very funny. Right. Uh, so I will take modern Greek over your random British accent any day. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, hey, it it helps the immersion because um, it's still you're walking around in a Greek speaking environment. It still sounds really mm -hmm. nice. Um, there are a lot of modern Greek words that were taken right from ancient. Um, and a lot of modern words are also just like their etymology is based in ancient. So even if they changed it around a little, um, you would still kind of be able to know what it is, um, just by hearing it. All right. Um, Kira, is there anything else here at Delphi that you wanted to point out? Um, uh, say if we get a quick aerial view. Yeah. Uh, because it's so spectacular. Sure. All right, so you would have come in there and then be led up. And here, I'll pan around over here. Yeah, so it's just zigzags all the way um, up through all of the city, both of uh, temples. Uh, we've got the Temple of Apollo here with the um, Delphi Charioteer out front. Yeah, he's right there. Uh, we've got the, uh, the gold palm tree, the Nactian Sphinx, uh, and then at the very top we have the theater. And you can definitely tell from like looking at the rest of the mountain, this had to be cut into the sheer like side of a mountain because everything is pretty mountainous. So it's actually quite amazing that they were able to cut all this into the side of a very steep mountain. Yeah. And it really looks like that in real life, if you've been to Delphi. I've stood kind of right overlooking here, and uh, yeah. Pretty incredible. Or just... Alright, so where am I? Okay, so I'm down there. <laughs> there we go. Um, do, 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 do. I'm trying to think. Let's see. Let us pull up our big map and see what we're close to. Because I'd like to avoid fast traveling if possible. Um, they don't have a lot, but they do have a bit of Thermopylae. We could try heading over there. There's not much there, though. Uh, what about Mycenae? I mean, it's a fast travel, but... Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine, okay. Fast travel? Okay, let's see, hang on, where are you? Okay, Megaris is there. I forgot where they put it in the game. Uh, oh my gosh. House of Agamemnon. Hmm? Um, go up right and up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna mark that so I know where I'm going. I think this is going to be the closest fast travel point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
forgot, did they include the Tholos tombs in this? Because I don't remember. Um... Kind of? Because <laughs> I was trying to look for the... the Tholos tomb, um... Because it should be, like, right down and to the... bottom area? I don't know. Um, but I don't remember if they actually... if that made it into the game. I feel like it did. Or actually, didn't they make most tombs in the game? Didn't they just take, like, a Tholos tomb shape and put that for every single tomb? Yeah. And then, uh, for some of them that have quests inside, they made them into, like, this elaborate underground necropolis thing. <laughs> yeah. Someone asked, was it actually a fighting arena on Crete? <laughs> or is that just a game? Ooh. Uh, I don't think so, but uh, we do get the Corybantes on Crete. Um, which is, um, you know, the origin of uh, one of the most famous Greek war dances. Um, but also the Corybantes were the, uh, the mythical guys who... Uh, would dance around and beat on their shields whenever the infant Zeus uh, was crying so that Kronos wouldn't hear him. So uh, we do get kind of a military um, element mixed in with that. Yeah, I was going to say, I am not... <laughs> I, I did like 1% of my studies on Crete, and that was pretty much Kanasa, so... <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, don't know much about Crete. You do have a beautiful horse, Lexi. Thank you, it's Pegasus, actually. Mm. <laughs> We're modeled to look out for Pegasus. So pretty. He is pretty. Usually I ride around on, a, on the sacred deer, but um, it's not very helpful for jumping off cliffs, because my deer will just die. But Pegasus, he glides off cliffs so you can jump from like any height and uh yeah oh no if it's a restricted location i don't know if we can actually walk around it without me you know not being oh there's bandits in there yeah Ugh, okay well i'm gonna see maybe we can get toward the lion gate and then uh we might be able to just see the lion gate but i don't know um trying to get around to the front oh and not get attacked by wolves I have no idea what direction I just went in. This is really funny. <laughs> this is what happens, I swear, when you play the game. You're like, I don't know which side I'm going in. Ah! Ah! We did! Okay, there we go. Oh, please don't attack me. Nobody attacked me. There it is. There it is. Although they don't actually have the lions, which is hilarious. Because it's called the <clears throat> Lion Gate. That's one of the only things that I learned about in my uh, ancient Greek archaeology class in college. I thought they did. <laughs> I know, I thought they did too. Um, it, it might be, but let me just see. Okay, so, the, but that's what the entrance looks like. I don't think the entrance is going to be on the other side. No, that just looks like a bunch of rock. Should have it in the game. Because I found a picture of it I've on the internet. That. I know, I was like, I swear I've seen it too, but I'm like, I don't remember what I saw it. Unless it's over here, maybe? We're gonna just... Wait, unless they, they wouldn't have put the statue on the inside of the wall. I don't think so. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay, so wait, where am I? I'm over here. Okay, so... Ugh, that's annoying. <laughs> Oh, that's annoying. Okay, so I have to go to the other side. I, I swear, I could have thought that the entrance was actually on this side, because this is what it really looks like, but never mind. <laughs> Alright, close and enough. enough. Alright, so we're just gonna kind of gallop around to the other side. Ugh. If I can avoid getting attacked by these lions, that would be fantastic. No, they're gonna come after me. Alright. Okay, here they are. Here they are. Hopefully I'm not gonna be attacked, no. 
Look a bit weathered, but pretty much intact. Yeah, I mean, considering this is fifth century, um, it's pretty good. Yeah. Although, um, I don't know. This they is did a good th job with the approach here, too. Um, yeah. So one of the points behind the architecture of Mycenae was that it was a fortress and they were expecting to be attacked. So um, you would funnel the invaders up through this really narrow passage and then you and your buddies would stand on top of the wall and just like rain rocks down on them. Pretty fun, pretty fun. I wanna like go- And the walls are super thick too. Yeah, although um, I think though in real life that the so so the little like we can tell the these are pretty small stones right here, but um, uh -huh. in real life these would have been much bigger, much bigger because it was built with what we would call cyclopean masonry. So, um, so yeah, more like the stones around the gate. Yeah, just like huge slabs of boulder one onto the other. Um, and then actually in real life, I think a lot of the stones that you're going under have tiny holes in the wall, uh, I think, that were like bullet holes from Venetian times, I believe. I think it's... I don't know. I, I remember taking a tour around here, and I remember the tour guide saying something about if you look in modern day, you will 100% see little holes in the wall where, like, lookouts would hide to avoid Venetian gunfire. It's pretty cool. I want to go in, but I don't want to be attacked by the bandits. Um, I guess... I mean, the depiction of the ruins in 500 BC. Come on. Um, by this time, would we even have as much as this, Kira? Uh, I don't know about the preservation. I want to say we probably wouldn't have a gigantic hall at the back. Yeah. But it is really cool to see that sort of um, Mycenaean architecture in the game. So sure. I'm not too mad that they included it. No, I think it just, it looks, it looks great. Although you can tell there's kind of like, I think, oh, they did, they put, wait, that that's actually Minoan, I think. <laughs> Never mind. Um... <laughs> yeah, they've got some Minoan frescoes, um, some Mycenaean, and then they um, they modeled the central room in there um, very heavily after that, um, uh, that one recreation that everyone uses. Yeah. Of uh, the palace at Nestor, I think. Yeah. I mean, very much plugged in, but still pretty. I don't actually see the Tholos tomb, but I see a spot in the ground for a tomb, so I'm gonna assume that's... Yeah, it's uh, one of the gray circles, maybe? I think so. I can't tell. It's hard to tell from here, but yeah. <sighs> yeah, I think... Yeah, I don't know. It's a nice recreation for the game, for game purposes, for sure. Uh huh. And it's so cool to actually like walk in the really old buildings because they've got them all painted up. Mm hmm. And the way that the torchlight cleans off the paint and the gold is spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, it really shows that I'm. Um really an archaeologist because when i came across these ruins in the game i was like "Ooh, ruins <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like the first thing i always want to explore i always want to explore like the old ruins and the oh okay Lines, right let's get away um oh look she even says something about it that's cool didn't even remember that but okay out of the lion's reach. Um, I don't know. We could go to Crete because that's like vastly different from the rest of mainland. From it's different from Attica because we've been now in Attica. We've been in uh, Peloponnesos. You want to try an island, Crete, somewhere? 
Sure. I was like, I don't know. My One of my favorite locations in the game is Knossos. We can definitely go there. If I remember sure. where they put it. We have about 15 minutes left. Gotcha. All right. Well, yeah. We can finish with some mythology. I, I don't think we can go in the labyrinth, but we can see the front door. <laughs> No, unfortunately, uh, Ancient Akrotiri is not really in the game. I think, Kira, do you remember? I think they have, like, one sort of ruined fortress-looking thing, but it's really not Akrotiri at all. Yeah. Like, I feel like they just put ruins on Thera just to acknowledge that there was a site, but it's definitely um, a very formulaic ruined temple. Ah, here we go. Okay. Oh, this is a long way down. Okay. Wait, they dropped me off. Okay. So coming down into Knossos. Um, trying to go between the old palace and the new palace. Okay. So you would have come down this ramp, and then you would have seen new palace here and old palace here. Um. <laughs> God, I would lose my mind if I could do this in VR. I know, me too. Like, I don't even know if I would be able to react properly. <laughs> I'd probably put the headset on and then never want to take it off. I'd probably waste away and die in ancient Greece. Um, happily. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, if I had no other video games except this one, I think I would be happy playing this alone for the rest of my life. Like, I don't think I'd need another game. <laughs> All I need is this one to keep me happy here, so I'll, I'll, I'll start and I'll get us an aerial view so you can see just how massive this palace complex is. All right, here we go. Uh, Kira, do you want to talk about why all these things look like bullhorns? Um, Nasus isn't really my strong point, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> so, essentially, all these cool... Um, like, little architectural things at the top. They're all shaped like bullhorns. Um, because the original bullhorn shape, they would have made an altar that looks like the... They would have called it the Horns of Consecration. So it's um, kind of based off the Minotaur. Um, since he was supposedly uh, deep down in the labyrinth here at Knossos, um, not only were cattle really important for the ancient Minoan uh, economy, um, but it was just like a huge motif used in Minoan art. Um, and so I'm not sure that they like actually would have put all these horns like on the tops of their building. That's kind of like a game recreation. Um, but you would have seen like a bunch of mini altars basically with this general horn shape. Um, there was a the there was supposed to be like a theater out here where you would have seen a lot of athletic spectacles. They didn't really put it in the game. They kind of favored courtyards instead for whatever reason. I mean, I suppose you could look at an area like this and say, "Ah, oh, theater," but um, they would have had seating. Um, but there was there was supposed to be like a giant altar essentially um, where you would have like bull sacrifices. Um, yeah, it's, but it's a cool architectural feature that they put in, um, and then, let's see, what have I been asked about a lot? Um, oh, red. So there's a lot of red used in game here, especially for the columns. Um, this is like a unique uh, Minoan architectural feature, the the red columns. Um, you wouldn't really have seen these other places. Um, certainly not until the Roman, the Roman era, the Roman period. Um, yeah, so 
yeah, th these red columns are really unique because they only really show up uh, in Minoan palace structures. Um, and then they've they've kind of like plugged in a lot of uh, other architectural or art elements. But um, one feature that they did really well that I noticed was um, these frescoes, these Minoan frescoes on the wall. Um, they're quite professional. They would have had uh, a lot of um, like like animal and and uh, plant motifs in here. Um, this one, I think they just kind of repeat um, on the first floor. Yeah, they've repeated these. I'm trying to dolphins. Think. Yeah, they would have like the the biggest motifs are the dolphins and like the the reeds and. Um, I do know in the game that they did actually put the dolphins in the building, but uh, for whatever reason, they put them only in the basement, and that's not really accurate at all. Like at all, <laughs> they would have been on the top, uh, the top floor. Um, this is accurate though. The the basement were ma massive storage areas where they would keep clay tablets with their linear A and linear B, which is the earliest form of writing here in the Mediterranean. There. We have dolphins. I don't know why they're only in the basement. It's really, really weird. Um, About it that they were found, like the plaster had fallen off from the second floor and landed on the first floor floor. And so at first they thought that the dolphins were on the floor, but then they were like, no, it's wall plaster that had fallen off. Yeah, as things started to degrade over the centuries um yes things would have definitely fallen off it's it's really interesting that you would have a recreation of canal sauce but not include the famous uh like bull leaper fresco or the um the famous the snake handler yeah like like you don't see snake goddess you don't see bull leaper and you you really don't see even the throne room which is like any picture of crete that you would google on the internet uh, famous throne room of Knossos, which is essentially like a red room with some reeds and like a tall chair. They don't put it right. in the game, which is fine um, because it's different time, but also to not have that room at all is a little strange. But I think, you know, when you put, when you're, when you're devoting more energy toward like the labyrinth itself, that's fine, I suppose. It features. We, we do have a bull leaping fresco, right? In the game? Yeah, it's just not here. Yeah. Like, they literally did not put it at the place where it would have been, which is right. why it's a strange decision. Because <laughs> um, they do so many things well about Canal Sauce. They really do. Um, yeah, I mean, they definitely went for the mythological stuff. This is mm. a fantastic recreation of the idea of the labyrinth, where you jump kind of in the pit, and then you go in, and you have these giant statues. But there's literally like, yeah, that's that's just a uh, game recreation. Um, I don't know, Kira, do you remember reading about any actual descriptions of the entrance to the labyrinth, or do we just hear a labyrinth? Um, like most of the descriptions that I've heard of are post antique. Yeah, so like nothing like this, which is clearly a game thing. Right. But it's yeah, also what makes the game so much fun, right? That you encounter these, like, weird, magical places, or if you go to Atlantis and such. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it's wonderful that they definitely put them in, and I love seeing, like, the different artistic takes on these really mythological places. Um... But yeah, certainly not. <laughs> certainly not historical. Yeah, I think that they had a balance to strike because if you're going to have a power fantasy of running through ancient Greece, you're going to want to fight monsters. Yes. Um, so they were able to use existing Assassin's Creed lore to um, kind of bring in all of these monsters and gods and mythological things um, into the actual historical period. Yeah, for sure. And then, let's see, by the 5th century, 
Yeah, I think that's the general opinion, Marcus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, it's a fun game location. And I do appreciate how, um, you know, that it's, I mean, it's quite a few <laughs> years uh, older, but I do appreciate how they, they really did do a great job of just leaving these ruins as spectacularly colored ruins um, that you can kind of... Now, this was pretty much leveled when Arthur Evans got there, right? Yeah, no, it was pretty much, I mean, there was none of the, I mean... Even today, you you would never see even this much of it. You uh -huh. have, like, y yeah. I mean, cause cause the original palace was like five levels or whatever, um, and then today you see maybe two or three. I feel like it's two. Um, I know he reconstructed the famous stairway. He did. I mean, you know, he tried his best to, to, you know, restore. But but I feel like a lot of what they put in the game was working off what Evans did. So I'm not even sure that, like, you know, if Evans was wrong and he put something in, you know, who knows if that was actually what it looked like. Um, I know Evans restored it with a lot of, uh, like, reds and golds and other colors. Um, like, honestly, even half of the frescoes we have today like their majority reconstruction like we only have a few pieces um yeah they're they're brilliant extrapolations is what i would say yeah um oh but i guess i do appreciate the fact that um so because i don't know if you can tell but uh because Knossos was essentially high up on this hill it's actually kind of up on a hill um because this palace was like five stories high and lots of open windows um you would have the aegean right up here and um in the summer they could actually feel like the sea breeze coming in and you would have felt it uh completely within the like at least the top levels of the fortress which is kind of a cool feature um so i really enjoy how they Got that part right. That would have been great air conditioning. Yeah, because, I mean, it was so hot. So uh, I definitely appreciated how they put that in, and then you can clearly see how you would have been able to catch the sea breeze. So just just even adding that is awesome. And it also really emphasizes how Ty Knossos was to the sea and to maritime trade. Oh, Yeah. I think, what was it? It was like the largest uh, Minoan settlement on Crete at one point, I believe. Yeah, it was the place. Yeah, the hub. Even more than Festos, even though Festos had some pretty cool features. Um, I'm pretty sure I even saw like a Festos disc type of uh, feature here somewhere, but I don't know if it was actually here. Uh, yeah, I think that might have shown up in one of the, um, like the Mycenaean and you can you can't see it, but I have finger quoting here. Um, like one of the uh, the tomb quests. Gotcha. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. I know they mention it. I just don't remember what context. But that was also Minoan found here. Um, we only have a few minutes left, but you know, is there anything we want to end real strong on? Certain place thing we want to we want to mention. Oh, there's so much of Greece we could probably mention. Yeah, that's a big question. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, there's that's the thing. This game is so huge that there's so many places we could probably go. Uh, if anyone wants to see a certain location, please put it in the chat now, or else we're gonna just pick some place. Um. People seem to just, uh... Wanna what about Olympus? Oh, Sparta! That's a good one. Ah, Sparta! That's yes. a good one. Cause... Uh, yeah, we should totally do Sparta. Yeah. I know, I was like, wait, wait, because she... Well, in the game, you're Spartan, so we should probably talk about Sparta. That's a great idea.
Now, I don't remember, but I don't know. Kira, have you been to modern Sparta? No, I've only been to um, Athens and Samothrace. <laughs> Hey, that's a great one, though. Like, out of all the places, Samothrace is pretty chill. Oh, I love it. I, uh, I spent two uh, field seasons there oh. um, working on the sanctuary. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I've gone through modern Sparta because apparently my tour guide told me there's really nothing to see at my modern Sparta. So we're going to get an aerial right here. So, this looks gorgeous in the game. They have all these beautiful monuments and buildings. Um, I'm pretty sure that all of ancient Sparta is pretty much unsalvageably gone. So I think the entire recreation of Sparta in the game is literally just um, like... It's recreation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which is like, cool, because they could put whatever they think ancient sparta looks like but um yeah if you were to ask about well, they must have building. used some written sources somehow so i think it's worth mentioning that a lot of what we know about sparta comes from really biased Athenian sources yeah uh and they were very much committed to making sparta look like the antithesis of Athenian perfection. So um, the whole story about them being like uber masculine military society with all these weird traditions, um, it, it's not true. Yeah. I mean, they did have like a, a really big military focus, but um, you know, not to the extent that Athens paid some out to be. That and then certain things like, um, like they don't really talk about the positives. Like if you were a woman in Sparta, like again, still like heavily patriarchal society, but you did have so much more freedom than in Athens. I mean, oh yeah, you could inherit land. Um, Couldn't you? Kind of of Sparta actually figured out how to sponsor her own team and become an Olympic uh, Olympic champion. Mm-hmm. Couldn't you actually, like, divorce or sue for land if you were, like, shamed or something? That I'm not sure on. I don't know. I heard something. I feel like I learned something, but I can't remember. Um. <laughs> Called uh, the flags and tents and pennants. You always forget that when you go... Um, visit ancient buildings that it was full of tapestry and carpets and cushions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Although, there is... I know it's still there in, like, modern... modern times now. There is a monument to Leonidas, though, isn't there? I believe there's, like, a giant... Like, the only thing that you can really see if you go to modern Sparta today, it's not this big. It's definitely not this big. But there is an actual... <laughs> there is a statue of Leonidas that has his name on it. And you can see... And it's, like, the only thing that's left over. Um, mm. So to have a monument of him here in the game is accurate, but it was um, not that big... And, uh, yeah, it was very different. <laughs> so. No, we are out of time. So, thank you, guests, uh, for being here today and introducing us to ancient um, Greece. As you have heard, I don't know much about ancient <laughs> Greece, so I'm really appreciative that you took the time um, to come and talk to us. Uh, Dr. Jones and Lexi. Yeah, no problem. It was really fun. Love this game. Yeah, this was great. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely really fun. And uh, if you can, highly suggest playing it. Yes, and we are all on Twitter. So um, hit us up on there if you want to keep the conversation going. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we are always happy to talk nerd stuff. Yeah, we will nerd, about, we will nerd out about the game, certain elements. Um, art, linguistics, all that good stuff, and, uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I tweet random things about this game all the time. <laughs> Me too. And like every other game I play, so. Yeah. Well, we're actually going to continue our series on Ancient Greece because next month we will be playing Immortals Phoenix Rising uh, with Alexander van der Walle and potentially one other scholar. Um, so we will look at the mythology that is being used in that other Ubisoft game that is focused on Ancient Greece. Nice, so we love hope that game. Yeah. That you can join us then too. Sweet. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. See you next month. All right. All right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. All right. So, gotta.